gathered you here today to talk about some books which are small but mighty. These are some short books that can help you get back into reading, get out of a reading slump, or just help you to get into the routine of reading more regularly. Because very important <laughs> and professional and serious psychological research which I have not conducted. Basically, I just have a theory that if you read short books, you get this like satisfaction of feeling like you've completed something. And that can really help you get back into the flow of reading. And so I've drawn up a list of 23 books for 2023 that can prove to you that it's not size that matters, it's what you do with it. These are 23 books that I read pretty much in one day because they're so good, they're so addictive, they have the perfect pacing, they're wonderful. And I wanted to share them with you guys and I'll also share the page count so you can get a rough idea of how long each book is. First and foremost, if you're still crying over Call Me By Your Name, instead of reaching for some tissues, reach for this book instead and just continue to cry. Cry more. Lie With Me at just 160 pages long is a heart shattering coming of age novel about this beautiful and tender first love and it broke me. It really did. Another book that is incredibly moving, again at 160 pages long, is Giovanni's Room. Both of these books document a lost love. This is all about passion and death and trying to grapple with both your head and your heart. Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin is just a masterclass in writing. And right from the first line, it had me. It had me gripped. So those are both quite sad queer love stories, but if you want something happy, I would recommend Heartstopper. This is a series of graphic novels. The first one is 304 pages long, but you absolutely fly through it. You get this great ensemble of comfort characters who are at school and falling in love and you're just really rooting for them. You feel like you get this new found family. It's a really lovely story and stunningly illustrated. Now on a totally different note because it's all about range, we have The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. At 208 pages long, this is a short story collection of Argentinian horror, which is what the French could call the World Cup final. Hey hey. And anyway, it's so great. I think that short story collections would be great to read if you're like someone who commutes to work because you can probably read a story each journey although I will warn you these are quite disturbing at times. Next we have Open Water again at 160 pages apparently that's like <laughs> the golden number and this book is one of the most vulnerable and lyrical pieces of fiction I have ever encountered. I could not put it down once I started. It's about the early stages of a relationship just completely soundtracked with music. If you're a music lover you will adore this and also a really really gorgeous exploration of both masculine and existing within a black male body. Next, at just 112 pages long, we have Assembly. This presents a portrait of a black British woman who is considering the ways that she has constructed herself and her life, reflecting all of modern society's values, and yet she still doesn't feel fully assimilated into that culture. It's about the assembly of a person, but also a literal assembly where she's talking to young kids, and this causes her to get really introspective and think about all of the things that she has done, essentially to like please other people, and she thinks about who she's really trying to prove that to. Next, we have Recitative, which is a short story at just 45 pages long. It's a great introduction to how wonderful Toni Morrison was as a writer, and there's a great introduction from Zadie Smith. And it's a story about two girls, one black and one white, but Toni Morrison never tells you which is which, and it's genius. Next, Normal People. This is 300 pages long, but for me, it's the book that got me back into reading after I finished my degree. It's about miscommunication and growing up and university, and almost everyone I know who has read this book said that they read it all in one sitting. It's about growing up in a small town and having one person who you were just like magnetically attracted to. Connell and Marianne are these intricately crafted characters and the dynamic of their relationship is so carefully considered and analysed and oh, I love this book. And of course once you've read that book you can also then watch the series over on BBC iPlayer where there are loads of great shows that you can watch. And if you're looking for something even more dramatic allow me to recommend to you my childhood favourite show Waterloo Road. When I was a kid I was obsessed with this show and we would all talk about it in the playground and that obsession has continued well into adulthood. I'm still obsessed. It's a school drama with brilliant storylines It explores love and family and friendship and so much more. There's great characters. For me it's such a trip down memory lane because all 10 seasons of the original show are over on BBC iPlayer that you can watch anytime. And now the 11th season of Waterloo Road is here. They've brought it back after all these years. Some of my favourite characters have returned. And when I tell you the twist at the end of episode one is crazy. They are insane for that. You're not ready, but you should be. You should go watch it. Even just hearing the theme tune. It's just so iconic and so nostalgic. This show just has so much heart. And you can scan this QR code right here to check out BBC iPlayer where you can find Waterloo Road 
Road and hundreds of other amazing shows. And I'll also leave a link down below in the crotch box. Thanks to BBC iPlayer for sponsoring this video, and now the next book is Paradise at just 128 pages long. This follows these two boys who live and work in a kind of gated community, and they hatch this evil, despicable plan to take what they believe is rightfully theirs. It slowly builds up as they're plotting and scheming to this huge crescendo, and the last pages of this book practically turn themselves. It's addictive. Next, we have Time Code of a Face at 144 pages. This is by Ruth Ozeki, who won this year's Women's Prize. It's a super understated book where Ruth Ozeki essentially sits down and analyzes her own face in a mirror for like three hours, I think, and so she documents all that time where she she's just looking at herself, at her own reflection, and really considering like every crease, every wrinkle, every mark on her face. It's so astute and observant, it's way more interesting <laughs> than it sounds, and while she's looking at her physical reflection, it also causes her to reflect on other things in her life too, so I enjoyed it. Next, at 168 pages, we have Indelicacy. This is about this gallery cleaner who is just so dissatisfied with her life, and she, to get through her work shift, she's always thinking about how nice it would be to have a rich husband to provide for her. Then, she kind of girl bosses a bit too close to the sun, and she gets that, she gets that fantasy, it comes true. And actually, she finds out that she still isn't really satisfied, and the writing is just chef's kiss. Several People Are Typing is unlike any book I've ever read, because it's a novel told entirely through Slack conversations, which is like an online workspace. One of the characters is trapped inside Slack. And <laughs> it's as weird as it sounds, but so addictive. And I had a lot of fun with this. I kind of read it ironically, and then unironically really enjoyed it. I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did, and the online chats genuinely feel so believable. Technically it's 256 pages long, but because it's formatted like a chat room, it reads really quickly. Now another book that also takes place in a chat room is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. At 198 pages long, this is a conversation between two women, which starts off with them talking about like an apple peeler, and then become sexual very quickly and they bring out the absolute worst in each other. And it's crazy. Now, sticking with the social media theme, at 148 pages we have We Had to Remove This Post. This is about a team of online content moderators who work for an unnamed social media company Facebook, and basically check whether content should be allowed on that platform or not, and as a result, they end up spending their entire day watching the most violent and graphic and hateful content on the whole internet, and so then the book is about how they slowly become desensitized, and in some cases radicalized, by the content they are constantly consuming. And it's kind of wild. Speaking of wild, the next two books are by the same author. The first one is The Vegetarian, and at 160 pages long, this is literally about a woman who decides to become a vegetarian. However, in the context of the book, this is seen as a hugely subversive and radical thing to do. And the novel then just descends into violence and chaos and madness as it spirals out of control. And secondly, a very different tone is The White Book. At 128 pages long, this is a series of prose, which is each a kind of meditation somehow linked to the colour white. It's a chilling and introspective look at a family tragedy and other facets of life, and so wonderful. And then similarly, this time on the colour blue, we have Blue It by Maggie Nelson. It's the same kind of thing. At 112 pages, Blue It is a kind of social study. It's a series of vignettes that cover a lot of ground, but give each thing the detail and level of intimacy that it needs. Yeah, it talks about a lot of things, but it's still so thoughtful and detailed enough on each one. Next, at 176 pages, is Passing. We follow these two women who are both black, but could pass as white. And so one has chosen to live her life as a black woman, and the other has chosen to live her life as a white woman and it becomes this fascinating exploration of race and identity. And you won't even feel time passing. You're welcome. Now, if you want to read a classic and want to be able to say that you've read George Eliot, but you don't fancy the like 800 page book that is Middlemarch, allow me to introduce you to the 176 page Silas Marner. It discusses religion and community and theft and industrialization, and we follow this weaver, and it's the perfect dose of George Eliot. Another classic, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, and this is 176 pages long. This is about a family who have kind of been ostracized and isolated because everyone believes 
that they murdered their relatives, which could be a good one to read just after Christmas. I'm just putting it out there. It's darkly funny, the humor has really stood the test of time, and it's a classic, but it's also a very easy read. Next, at 220 pages, is one of my favorite books that I read in 2022, and that is Elena Knows. This follows a mother whose daughter is believed to have killed herself, but she doesn't think that's possible. As a result, she goes on this journey to find out what really happened to her daughter on her final day. And it ends in this searing and brutal and shocking confrontation. It gave me goosebumps, it made me cry, I was in public, it was embarrassing, but I loved it. At night, All Blood is Black is 160 pages long, and it follows this man from Senegal who is fighting in the war with the French. And when his best friend gets seriously injured, he says to him, please put me out of my misery, I can't take this pain, please kill me. And our central protagonist just cannot bring himself to do that. And so he essentially leaves his friend to suffer a much more painful death. And that decision, that split second decision that he made haunts him for the rest of his time fighting in this war. We watch as he kind of descends into madness and this book is not for the faint hearted, but it is great. And finally, we have Bonjour Tristesse, which literally translates to hello sadness. So you know immediately, I'm in. This is 128 pages long, and it's about youth and leisure and this angsty teen who is spending the summer in the French Riviera with her father and his mistress. I just finished it. I think it's great. And there you go. That is 23 books to get you out of a reading slump and back into the game. I hope this helps you get back into the habit of reading. This is my public service. Let me know what your favorite short book is in the comment section down below. And don't forget, you can join a community of book lovers just by clicking the join button on my profile down below. You can also subscribe if you're new. Give this video a like if you liked it, if you like. And of course, don't forget to check out Waterloo Road over on BBC iPlayer. All the best. Stay in touch. Have a wonderful day and happy reading. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.